Hello, how are you? It's a wonderful day today again, isn't it? Really warm today. So, well, no, that's not my real head. This is me. Okay, so I promised you like a cultural theme today. Um, how have you been? I hope you've been well, wherever you are, Chicago, New York, Greenwich Village, wherever you are. I hope you're not in a sort of warm city with all that like smog and stuff, you know, and you've been working hard and go home to your little apartment and nothing to look forward to. So I'm not, I mean, this might change that. So I'm trying to get some culture into my uh, channel. And well, we started with this, didn't we? Now, what's this? So if you look down there, is it on that side? I think it's on that side. So I changed my icon. Okay, so as you know, my channel's called um, Bertold Riesenthal, which sounds very German, because it is. Bertold is a German name, I suppose. Is it German? Could be German. Um, which is basically means Bertie. Okay, so, and Riesenthal. Well, I'll let you work that one out. But this is, let's call this reason tile. Okay. So, um, this is, as you can see, it's a head. It has a head and a cross. And it's like a stick. Okay. There's a piece of leather on the end here just to, to hang it up. So I might, I might hang it up back here somewhere later on. Okay. Above the door or something. And it's made of oak. Okay, so this is this is cultural history, you know. Does anybody know what this is? Well, it's called let's call it Mr. Stickhead. Mr. Oak Stickhead. Okay, he looks a lot more attractive than I do. Okay. And I got this idea from a book. Okay, this is the book. And oh it's all back to front. Never mind. It's a book called Arpen Bars Derv, which is Breton. And so pen means head, bars means stick, and derv means um, oak. So it's the oak stick head. It's, it's basically a, a huge match stick. Okay. So it, it's, it's quite phallic as well, if you hold it like this. And um, I made this one as a Christmas present from my daughter, you know, because that, that's the kind of thing we give, give each other for Christmas here. She, she gave me a box of After Eight, ten years in a row, and this was the punishment. Um, I made it, took, a, you know, quite a few hours to make, and so let's, let's have a look at this book again. So the book... I got this idea there you can see you can see one on the front there on the cover and um, so I just basically tried to make the same thing here there's a there's a head and there's a, cro a cross and there's a stick okay so this is a lovely little book in Breton Breton language which I actually which I like reading Hedau lagard Askleras Nose etapas herve uskoan I love all that stuff, it's great. Um, and this is like, the person who wrote this, the author, Ervan A. Moal, okay, that's his name. He was born in the late 19th century, so around about 1875. And... He wrote this book when he was like in his mid mid twenties. I think it's the first book he wrote, and this this was published later, like about in the ninth beginning of the nineties. Um, this is well, this reprint, and so he wrote this book. He was an interesting guy because he, unlike other Breton authors who are sometimes like it's a bit dodgy, you know. I mean. A couple of them have been were like accused of being collaborators in the Second World War, helping the Germans. Um, you can't say 
say, this this guy was late. This was this guy was in the resistance. Okay, oh, it's six o'clock, is it? The bells, the bells. Um, and he, so he, well, I'll tell you a bit about that later. When he, he, he basically trained to be a priest. And he spoke, he only spoke Breton for the first five years of his life. So if anybody, I mean, there are like loads of people out there who want to learn Breton, at least five or six of them. Um, and if you want to, so, you know, if you want to read Breton in, like, written by somebody who only learnt French later, you know, then read this. I mean, there are some other ones he wrote, and I just give you the rundown. <laughs> sure. Sure, what we're dying for is the rundown of the book. So it's basically a children's book. Okay. So I like reading children's books. Because if you, if you want to learn a language, most a lot of people are learning a language. So if you want to learn a language, start with children's books. Um, because then you can learn the way children learn. And I, I've in, by in learning Breton, I even sort of bought some children's like illustrated children's books with like boats and cars and trains and stuff and all those things that children love to look at. Um, it's, it's, makes everything a bit more fun if you do it that way, you know, so anyway, this is, this is a children's book and it's just not, it's not based, um, it's not based in any sort of century or any time, there's no time scale, or anything. it's just a fantasy past and there are these, there, so there are these two boys and I, I presume that they, I mean, they live in Brittany, okay, so, and their mother's dying, so she's on, on her deathbed, and they, they've been having a bit of a bad time, you know, they've been having a hard time, so the crops have failed, and uh, so she's, she, she's on her deathbed, and she says, look, there's that thing up there hanging above the door, okay, so it's like this, hanging above the door, the pen bars, they have my, my pronunciation is perhaps wrong. It's, perhaps it's pen bach, because it said H is sometimes pronounced bach. bach. Okay, so. Now, so she says, go, just bring me that thing. I'm going to tell you all about it. So, so they bring it to her just before she dies. And she says, this is going to protect you on your journey. So what, what you, you have to do is when I, when I die, you have to go on a journey and you're going to be taken to you get you're going to have to go to the well it's like to the promised land not the promised land but well, in a sense yeah you're going to go somewhere where you're going to have more things are going to happen and you're going to you know you're not going to fall on hard, hard times as you have here so they listen to their mother and she dies and but she before she dies she says this is going to protect you okay on your journey so in a sense this is like a talisman this is like you know um in britain we have we used to have like when i rode my motorbike i always always had a was it saint christopher around my neck so this is a bit like a saint christopher but breton style okay so this is the head i mean if you if you read any books on breton uh prehistoric breton art I think the kind of things that have been um, even medieval art actually you know the head pen um, it's very important in Breton mythology and culture and so you got a lot of word Breton words start with pen so yeah or, or va, va pen va pen so which means like on the subject of so it's like basically uh, in, in English we say over there it's like the heading, you know, under the heading. And that, that's just one example, but there are lots and lots of them. So head, you know, I think for in the prehistoric period, tribal Europe, heads were very important. Okay. So um, this is the head. This is probably a, 
um, even though this look, looks very prehistoric, this is his moustache, um, he looks like a warrior, but he's, that's nice and nicely decorated up there with sort of Celtic stuff. And um, so this is probably a saint. So what happened is that the saints were, um, Brittany was, when Brittany, Brittany was Christianized, all these um, missionaries came over from Ireland and the, the Bretons in Brittany, they were all like, what, what's the term, canonized, sanctified. So um, they, there are actually sort of many more saints in Brittany than, than anywhere else. When, the, the Bretons just like turned people into saints just without actually asking the Pope. They just did it because it's like they're local, they're local heroes. So Brittany was divided into, hang on, I've just got to let the dog out, be back in a sec. So, so Brittany was divided in all to, in all these, I suppose you call them dioceses, and e each one had its like patron saint. This is a paint, so this is a patron saint, like a Saint Christopher, and this, um, so this would be the patron saint of whichever diocese you lived in. So all the, the, the department, the departments, the departments, the administrative areas of Brittany, they were all sort of, they somehow go back to, they were based on those dioceses or bishoprics. I'm not, I'm not very good at like those terms, but okay. So this is patron saint. And so the boys went off with this patron saint on their way, trying to find the promised land, which was somewhere else. And this guy, he protects them. And when they get there, something very surprising happens. But first, what happened to them on their way there, they got tempted. So it's like fairly typical kind of, uh, you know, sort of Satan trying to <coughs> tempt them to leave the, you know, the, the righteous path. Um, and so this this man comes and offers them like food and accommodation and says, you know, come with me, you know, little boy, you know, you never take sweets from, children should never take sweets from people they don't know, but they, they do. And if it wasn't for this guy, he would have turned them into dogs. Okay, so, so when they're, at sleep at night, this guy, Mr. Penbars, talks to them, one of them, and warns him, look, beware of this guy. Okay, so what happens is all the other villagers around who didn't have one of these, they got turned into dogs. And um, this evil man shows the two boys what he's the dogs before he t turns them into dogs which is his plan and he lets them out and they get fed and but they he doesn't give them enough food so invariably one or two get eaten by the other the other dogs okay but because of mr penbars here the boys are warned and when uh <clears throat> the servant <clears throat> of the evil man tries to hit them on the head with a huge mallet they resist, <clears throat> and I, I don't know what happens to the, the evil devil, but I think the, the sort of um, the soil, the, you know, a huge hole in the ground appears, and he just basically just returns to, uh, to wherever he came from. And all the villagers thank the boys, and they go off on their way, on their journey. And so what happens is, that when they actually, so there they are praying, you know, this is after the awful events. And when they actually get to the, to where they should stay, the new, um, what, there are different words for this in different cultures. So in English, you'd say homeland, in German, you'd say Heimat. Um, there are different, different words. Uh, la patrie, I suppose, in French. Uh, Avro, Avro, Honvro in Breton. So this is what happens when they get to, excuse me, when they get to a place where 
the pen bars wants them to stay they, one of the boys just stuck it into the ground and what happens is that the the pen bars realizes oh this is this is a nice place to be and branches start to grow and leaves and so that's the way if that happens you know this is where you you know this is where you're going to spend the rest of your life so you stick the head bit of it into the ground at night when you're sleeping so one day I'm, when I get to Brittany I'm going to stick this into the ground somewhere between Pampol and uh, Saint-Brieuc Saint or Saint-Brieuc and I'm gonna it's gonna it's gonna say come on stay here you know um do I believe that I think I do um now so I've got a just before I end I have to mention that these illustrations that I showed you are made were made by a guy called um, Jean-Yves André. Okay, so uh, he might still be alive. I'm not sure, but he, they're copyrighted, so I just thought I'd mention his name um, because it, it's like I'm referring to them. It's a citation, and so this book is. If anybody's interested, if there's a publisher out there interested in this book, okay. Um, I could translate it for you, and I would need about, I don't know, 20 or 40 hours to do that. I can translate it into French, or into, uh, into sorry, don't do French. I could translate it into, the, into English or German. Okay, so I got through that. That's nice. Yeah, that was a lot less stress than I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, can you hear that? The birds twittering. Yeah, it's lovely. It's just it's cooled down a bit now you know birds are twittering yeah no aeroplanes in the sky I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have I don't do I don't advertise beer this is this is this is a really good German beer um, and it just costs 40 cents per bottle so I'm not but I'm not I don't do I don't advertise beer so um, I'm just gonna finish drinking that beer and have enjoy my evening and I hope you enjoy your evening wherever you are in 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 chicago or new york or greenwich village or whatever wherever you know it was nice talking to you again and um uh, i've been the next my next blog is going to be on a really fascinating subject which is um why the churches have lightning conductors you looking forward to that one? I'm sure you are. See you then.